Our next speaker, Ms. Claudia Masai, CEO at Siemens Oman, speaking on today's topic, impact of digitalization on transmission and distribution networks. Over to you, Ms. Claudia. Thank you so much, Melvin. Thank you for, to the team of Mina Energy Meet. It's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, I hope the presentation will be illustrative. I'm going to try to make it uh, very informal and, and not so much go into the very deep technical topics. But uh, I, I think it's very important that we understand how data, how IoT can actually impact and, and how we can actually benefit from it, uh, given that the more data we gather normally, the, the more efficient we can operate our processes. So here we're talking about um, there is a whole trend of decarbonization going on, as, as we all know. And a lot of this trend passes by the idea of decentralization of power generation. What does that mean? So actually, we're talking about having microgrids uh, or having decentralized generation in which you, instead of having like a very big um, power plant like we, like we have in Oman, we have like a Sohar, Barca, Sur, Salala. Actually, the idea would be rather having each home having its own solar panels, for example, or maybe having someone who has a farm somewhere having a wind power turbine and, and generating power from that. And ultimately, if regulation allows, you can get to the point in which you are even able to sell it back to the group. So how can we control all of this traffic of energy? Because in the past, it used to be that you had a power plant and then you would have the energy flowing in one direction from the power, power plant to the consumer. Nowadays, we have smart grids, we have microgrids, uh, so we need smart transmission and smart distribution to ensure that the flow of electricity is accounted for and also that you, you really have the demand and supply balancing itself out, each other out. So this brings us obviously more efficiency to the operations and also better asset management because you're able to understand that a part of the grid has to be maintained whereas the other part can compensate for it. So looking forward, um, it is, we're gonna now talk about the challenges that grid operators and what are the digitalization trends that we see. So most of, the, of our day-to-day -day life talking about who operates a grid has to deal with maintaining a very large and distributed installed serve device base. You, you have like, a, especially in, in a country like Oman, uh, when we talk about the Gulf region, you have lots of distances to be per, basically um, to, to, for you to have from one place to another. Uh, so you have devices scattered all over this region and you need to make sure that you, that you get this maintenance done in an effective way. You don't necessarily have support for mobile devices if you're dealing with, with the classical setup. Uh, many times you have secondary substations still in remote places, and you definitely have a very complex record management of faults. So you, maybe you have a technician who went to a substation, then he writes a, a log. So if you start digitalizing every single step of this journey, so if the technician, for example, instead of writing in a notebook and then handing in this notebook to his manager back in his base, if he can go with a, with a like tablet and then log into the tablet already, as soon as he enters the data, the data will go to the, to the base, to the database, and some action can be taken on it. So those, when we talk about digitalization, we're talking not only necessarily about the equipment you install in the substation, but we're talking about every part of the process being digitalized in order to streamline everything and to make everything more efficient. Um, you many times you also have non-conformance costs that are called by, caused by bad power quality. And, and that is also a matter that, uh, that depends on regulation as well. But many times grid operators, they have fines if the power quality is not according to the standards that were set up. And finally, we need to start um, looking at online asset condition and monitoring. And why is that important? So that you're able to know when a, an equipment or a part will fail before it fails. So you can actually uh, start some, some sort of maintenance and ensure that you don't have downtime because downtime also can lead to a lot of fines. So when I look at distribution grids, 
nowadays you don't have so much transparency because of all these factors that, that, I, that I mentioned before. And that is where digitalization can come in and can ensure a better transparency. So it's not necessarily you're going to be letting everything be um, operating by itself, but bringing the data that is needed when it's needed allows for us still humans who are controlling the, the, the grid in many cases to be able to take uh, action much faster. And this will definitely be um, also good because we have normally a limited number of people working. So if the computer can come to the one person who's managing a few substations by themselves and they, the computer can tell you like, look in this one, in this equipment, it's going to fail in three weeks. It's much easier than if the technician sits there and has a lot of data that he didn't make sense of. So that is also the role of digitalization is making sense of the data so that the final decision making can still be taken by humans. So it's a little bit of a myth that digitalization will take jobs. It actually may create jobs because nowadays, as I'm going to talk later, you don't have so much of this data being used. So we need to ensure that the technology allows the data, the right data to float. And then people can jump in and collect this data that is floating and take action upon it. Because at the end, you still need someone to go to the substation and actually exchange some parts or do some maintenance and so on. Uh, finally, we also have uh, the infeed of renewables and that leads to a much more dynamic grid behavior because you don't have, so sun for the Gulf, it is a very much of a given topic. You have sun all year long, but as soon as you start dealing with wind, everything becomes a lot more unstable and a lot more inconstant. So that is why also you need to have much faster reaction as soon as you start getting wind into the mix. And finally, we also have cybersecurity threats that have to be taken care of. So those are basically the main challenges that digitalization tries to solve. And I'm gonna talk now mostly about um, what are the, so the technical solutions to it. So here, it's uh, basically, I have a schematic and uh, I'm gonna walk you through this. Uh, the the and I, and I want to make sure that you understand like this is not only about the the fact that uh, the digital substation which is the main topic of uh, of the the conversation today it's not that there was nothing digital in substations there was digitalized station bus in the past but that was just part of the action that is just part of the equation and actually we can have a lot more to it so you can add to that a digital control room. Digital control room actually is where you would have all the data being, so the data that I'm going to explain further, we're going to have like sensors in the whole installation, but all the data that you gather from the system goes into the digital control room and it is there where you have intelligent applications running and making sense and taking insights out of it. You also have something called non-conventional non -conventional, sorry, uh, instrument transformers. So that's LPTIs. And that is one of the main new uh, equipments that you can bring in. And that is actually something that will make sure that you actually have um, a different type of transformer that is much lighter and much more compact. And that makes not only the process goes digital, but also in terms of uh, installation in, in small spaces. Um, and also maybe you, you wanna do, you wanna have a, a digital substation in, in a place that has been already assigned, um, but you have limited size or you need more space for some reason. So if you exchange your traditional equipment by such an LPTI, that helps you gain also space in the, in the substation. And then finally, you also have the, the conventional instruments that allow you to get a lot of um, measurement in terms of, uh, of, uh, um, um, of merging the, the data that comes from the LPTC, LPIT and the CITs into the digital world. So how does that work? It works basically by coming up with the idea that you need to have sensors in a place. You need to get 
in inputs from all sorts of equipment that you have installed on the ground. And this input is actually going to be processed by an IoT layer. And in that IoT layer, you have all sorts of applications that get the data that was generated by the, um, by the sensors and process, takes insights, and sends, again, the, all the measures that need to be taken are sent to the digital control room where you have an operator taking a look at it. So that is important. Uh, we cannot forget, as well as I mentioned before, you have cybersecurity, and you also need to have integrated engineering so that you can get some also other implications uh, beyond the substation. Maybe you have something in the transmission lines or in the distribution side that you also need to make sure that whatever happens in the substation is also aligned with those two ends as well. So those are the possibilities of digitalization beyond what you had already as digital bus in the past. Now let's take a look a little bit on the history of uh, substation automation. We had only cabling in the past. So in the past, that is in the 60s and so on. Then at some point, you started being able to get a control center and this control center enabled point-to-point -point connection. That was what happened in the 80s. And then came the digital station bus. About 20 years ago, a little bit less, that's when we started uh, getting the idea of, of having some digital components uh, connected to the substation controller and making sure that you have a little bit of, uh, of data being analyzed and, uh, and being used for the operation of the, of the substation. And then finally, we got much more recently, the idea of process bus and IoT connectivity that goes beyond the station bus and that allows for a lot more data to be integrated. So that is a little bit of what you see here on the, on the station bus level is that you can get data from pretty much all of the devices that are connected to, to the grid. And, and that allows for you exactly to make sure that you can monitor everything much more uh, properly as well. I'm just gonna jump a little bit more. I, I had mentioned um, one of the main differences that we have between the past and now with the introduction of the LPTI, LPIT is that we have a much more compact device and that is connected to a merging unit. So this merging unit makes, makes sure that all the digital signals coming from the LPIT are integrated, are converted, and they are also the other new, uh, in, in new in terms of technology here, is that it is all transmitted via fiber optic cabling instead of the copper cabling that we used to have in the past. So that makes it for a much lighter installation and and much more efficient as well when uh, when we're talking about transporting and uh, and having the cabling going from for kilometers and kilometers. So those are basically the the comparison between the past and the reality now. And if you want to to see like a, from a from a three D modeling perspective, you have the conventional instrument transformers here that occupied all this space being replaced by the LPIT disk that is a much more compact and much better, um, much lighter and much more efficient in, in terms of, uh, of getting the, the signals transformed into digital. This is also when a, a real installation from, from our, in our factory being tested. And so what exactly is the advantage of the LPIT and of the merging unit, and also finally the process bus implementation. So besides the weight and the, and the size that I mentioned before that helps you to save costs, especially where land is expensive, but we also have the matter of operational safety. And that is probably where I would say, uh, when we're talking about a place like Oman, where you have a lot of space, the operational safety is the best argument, as well as the higher performance that you get with the, the LPIT because you definitely get um, a, reduce, a reduction in the danger of open short uh, city circuits. At the same time, you have the merging unit that as I said before, you no longer need copper cables, you need just an optic fiber, and that allows for a faster installation and allows for savings 
when you're thinking about not needing to install or, or invest in so much copper cables and also transporting all of this through long distances. And finally, you also have an isolation of, uh, of electronics in the control room. So that allows as well for a higher safety standard. And in the process bus implementation, you have much more flexibility and scalability because you basically have everything being connected and exchanging digital inputs. So you have independent signal routing and you have as well additional devices that you can integrate and get data from all of them at the same time. So that makes um, the process much more reliable and much more efficient. And when I mentioned in the, uh, just at the beginning, I said like uh, the, the whole IoT and digitalization is not going to um, kill jobs. It's actually going to create jobs. I think that is a good illustration here because when you're talking about a SCADA system, it, uh, which is already, if you would say like 20 years ago or, or 15 years ago, would be considered state of the art. It only uses about 5% of the, the data that would be available. We can really take a lot of the a lot of the data in consideration when we start going into IoT and when we start measure, monitoring and measuring the health status of every single equipment that is installed in the substation. And that is exactly when you have this dynamic data coming up continuously, real-time alarms and everything being controlled, that is where you are making full use of the power of data. And, and that is the moment where you start creating jobs as well, because then you have more people that have to be acting on uh, the, the findings of the system. And that is how you, you ensure that it's a win-win for everyone. More jobs, and at the same time, less downtime, less headache for the users and for the, for the consumers of electricity. And here is more or less what happens. You have a layer of applications getting the data from all sorts of different devices that can be somewhat digital or that can be equipped with sensors. So we're talking about RTUs, about protection devices, power quality, IoT, power meters, low voltage um, and circuit breakers, smart meters and inverters. All of those can have sensors feeding in data that goes into applications that, that are processed. Um, and just to make sure that I illustrate a little bit more, we're talking about something running on the cloud, but at the same time you have, so it's pretty much everything is as a service, but you can have a dashboard that allows the grid operators to understand each single device that I mentioned before. So the meters, the inverters, and so on and so. We can have a, a navigator that gives you an, an idea of what is the operational status in the cable network transformer stations. So that is basically the difference between having um, someone looking at the maintenance itself from someone looking at the transformer station. So one is in the grid and the other one is, is in the station itself. Then you also have a fault localizer that helps you to understand where in, in the line you may have a problem. And a power quality advisor, as I mentioned before, you can lead to fines if you have a, a level of power quality that is not the one defined by the, by the, the, the contractual conditions that uh, you as, a, as an operator have. So the, I'm just like being mindful of the time and I'm gonna skip this slide and, uh, and then just go into the, this one that is like the, the last one before the, the references. So here, what you have is, is basically the idea that you can have both um, uh, an idea. Uh, so you can have a system that is physically present and you can also do a digital twin, which is a digital clone of the system. So the same types of, of devices can be replicated in a virtual environment in the cloud so that you can run so many types of simulations with it. That helps you in terms of uh, ensuring power quality. Um, so you can, for example, let's simulate if you have three times more wind power coming into the grid, how is your grid, your currently grid installation gonna react? 
So you create a digital twin for that, and then you start in like increasing the amount that comes from renewable, or you have like a, an abrupt stop because you can simulate some fault on the line, and you can have a lot of scenario simulations. So you can at the same time make sure that your substation is prepared. And uh, if, you, if you need to act on anything, if you need to repair any type of or exchange any part of your equipment in advance, you're also ready to do so. So this is um, basically one of the, also one of the utilizations of digitalization as the idea of, uh, of replicating the, um, the device in a digital platform, in a digital environment. And then finally, I'm only going to talk about a, um, an, uh, an example of a reference that we have in Oman. So we have Al Hail, that's a grid station where we have installed an LPIT, and to, in order to convert the station to the to the digital substation, and also with process bus. So this has basically been been done a, a few years ago. And, uh, and it is currently in operation with, uh, with a lot more efficiency in the process that caters for, for better maintenance and so on. And I'd like to, to finalize saying thank you, Melvin, for, for the opportunity. It was a great pleasure to speak today to everyone. I hope this is not too much in a rush, but I try to keep it short so that uh, the other speakers also have a chance to, to present their technologies. Thank you, Claudia, and wish you all the best and hope to meet in person soon. Inshallah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.